the Leo Solar Fire Ritual Processional and Alleluia We gather at a holy time, a time at which we can assert the radiant glory of the inner God, creator soul of all the turning worlds. We gather here within the stream of solar fire, streaming from the constellation Leo. We stand within the power of the Lord of true identity, he who guides all blinded souls into the essence of the self. Let all false understanding of the heart and soul of life now cease. Let misconceptions of the truth of self now fall away, revealing thus the core of life, the cosmic pulse sustaining all. Let the glorious self emerge, and let us know the oneness of that self. Let us see that birthless, deathless self, sustaining all, pervading all, expressing all. Let all cosmic lions roar the note of endless self. Invocation of the First and Fifth Rays Through the Lion Pass Two Potent Rays The First Which Sounds the Word of Death Death unto all finite sense of self and eventual release into the freedom of the absoluteness of the cosmic I. Then as well the fifth, which confers the power of discrimination real, by means of which the self may know its nature true, what in fact it is, and what in fact it never truly is, captive to the falsity of form.
we stand within this dual stream of rays divine, a stream of power and of knowledge true. Let us breathe within our aura the fiery red of Ray the First, then with an ohm direct it towards the healing of the earth. Let us breathe within our aura the flaming orange of Ray the Fifth, then with an ohm direct it towards the healing of the earth. In concert with the will of God, we see these two pass through the lion, thence descending to our planetary home, the earth. Our focus at this time of monthly invocation is the fixed cross of the heavens, the cross whereon the struggling soul awakens to its age-old plight and learns to disengage itself through discipline from matter's heavy yoke. The cross of fiery pain and bitter woe, whereon the long imprisoned Christ comprehends in clarity the nature of his servitude, and so refuses all the many lures of form which hold him down. Thus through giving up of that which once was all too keenly sought, the weary but triumphant soul sets foot within a kingdom new, the radiant kingdom of the soul. Four signs are found upon this cross of soul opposed to form. But one, the sign of Leo, is far more potent at this time. Thus let us focus fiery thought upon the god within the lion, and upon three deities who carry out his will. The grand man of the heavens, effulgent solar lord, and as well the greatest two of all our circling planetary gods, the occultist and the mystic, leaders of the Logoi, highest of the seven. As we focus in our thought upon the heart and soul of life, let us seek to join in radiant love that glowing lion heart of cosmic love that beats in all the beating hearts of space, the lion self that roars in all the worlds.
together. In the center of all love I stand, and from that center I, the soul, will outward move. From that center I, the one who serves, will work. Let the love of the Divine Self be shed abroad in my heart, through my group, and throughout the world. Together and as one, we step within the aura of the great Leonian Lord, and immerse ourselves within that mighty being who promotes identification with the one and only Self. The power thus to know and be that Self will surely and at length be ours. It is so even now, could we but shatter the illusion born of finitude. Thus, through the power of the lion, let us know ourselves as self at last. In all this cosmos vast, there is one theme the theme of self, beginningless, without an end. Never was the time when it was not, and never shall it cease to be. Parentless, the parent only of itself, boundless, timeless, absolute the one without a second, the self, the source of all, the self, the source of bliss, the self which is all worlds, yet infinitely more, the self which every human being must strive to know and be. The self, the answer to all quests. The self, the one and only self. Together and in song, let us celebrate the Ancient of all Ancients, ever new in the eternal now, the celebrated Ancient Self. Sealed from 
sight, a self at once with cosmic fire, a one primeval ancient might, divisible. Meditate upon the ancient, ageless self, which we forever are. Let us take our place upon the fourfold field, deep within the crowd, yet utterly alone and unrelated. Though intuition now reveals the boundlessness of self, it was not always so. As man emerged from out the third, the sense of self was new and faint. Dim were his perceptions of a difference twixt himself and that which lay on every hand. Slow was he to sense himself as center, a center of distinction from the rest, a center destined to become the flower of personality. At first he knew not this from that, not self from the little self, but rapidly he came to know the primacy of self, and then that self did strengthen and exalt. Let us place ourselves within the sensing known by early man, discovering with him the first reflection of the boundless self, the state of self which first reveals 
the separated I. That, 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 this, 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 there is that and there is this and this and I. That, 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 this, 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 there is that and there is this and this and I. Meditation. In meditation deep, let us reflect upon that early state of I, a state of self most primitive but needful. Let us seek to understand this very first of boundaries erected long ago. Twixt the self and every other thing, which self apparently is not.
Let each of us face another, certain of our dominance over every other one. The sense of separation grows apace. A compelling sense of difference. What was once a dim distinction fast becomes the leading fact of consciousness. Selfishness now rears its scowling head. As well it must if new formed man is safely to proceed upon the ever upward way. Self is seen as all-important. Self is seen as all-absorbing. Self is seen as most distinct, distinct from every other self, valued rarely, if at all, except to gratify desire. Man now at the center stands, the center of his tiny world, imprisoned fast within the granite walls of early ego, caring for himself alone. You are 
lower ego, subject to the law of cleavage, reigns supreme in early days. It does so e'en today for most. Do we understand its origin, the cause of its sustainment? Are we ourselves its frequent victims, though we strive for higher states? Meditation In meditation deep, let us ponder selfishness, its root, its purpose, and its curse. Let us see the ways, though they be few, in which e'en now we may be tainted by this ancient limitation. Let us stand upon the fourfold field, alone and rejected by all whom we have previously spurned. But the law of karma stands supreme. Love bestowed is love returned, and hatred reaps its like. The man who stands in selfishness soon finds himself alone. His subjects and his servants fled. With none to carry out his will, power falters, vigor fails, zest for living disappears. He lives a life of isolation, forced upon him by his very pride. Alone and in reflection, attentive to the whispers of a still, small voice, he begins to learn, though slowly, the lesson which at length will sound the knell of lower self. But he finds the lesson hard. <laughs>
Meditation. In meditation deep, let us ponder well the law of love, the cosmic law well guarded by the still small voice of conscience.
Do we hearken to that voice? Do we know when we transgress, infringing thus a brother's rights? How shall we tend the unity which must prevail between our brothers and ourselves? Let us find our positions emerging slightly from the dark, uncertain of our nature and longing for the light. Each darkened soul is most certain of its sense of self. A unity of selfishness prevails, and higher self is nowhere to be seen. That certainty must be destroyed, and twoness of a higher kind must penetrate the realm of lower thought. The higher self must make its presence known. Duality divine must supervene. Thus weakening the pride of the self-assertive king of beasts. A higher voice must be heard, a higher touch be felt, a higher path be followed than the one which leads to selfishness and gloom. Wrongful pride of personhood must vanish in the higher light, and lower self be lost to sight obsessive.
Meditation. Let us realize the nature of the luminous point revealing, the higher radiance which redeems the man of form. Let us know in time and space that we are two as well as one, and thus be not deceived by the nearness of the lunar man. In meditation deep, let us ponder the duality of self, the high, the low, and how they both must merge. Let us form the symbol of the heart, tolerant of those whose ways are other than our own. Selfishness, intolerance, these early guardians of the nascent self at length must go. The world is host to countless points of living light, and each 
deserves respect. There dawns upon the now divided human being, the man of light and shadow, appreciation of the value of his brother selves, his companions on the endless way. Whether wandering in the darkened veils of form, or walking swiftly towards the light. Each, he learns, must play his part unto the glory of the whole. Each has the duty, nay, the joy, his full nature to express. The lion of self-assertion must find itself transformed into the lion of self-expression. The self divine within each heart and mind must be revealed. It is a self creative, an aspect of the Brahmic will which plays creatively within and through all forms. Each man has a part to play. Each man has a place. Let every player learn his part and act it well, for there the honor lies. There, too, the joy and bliss. In meditation deep, let us ponder on the joys of self-expression.
Let us form the symbol of Neptune, the god of compassion, who melts the isolated boundaries of lower self. The heart expands and selfishness fades out. The sun of selfhood, wrongly centered, disappears as well, and Neptune takes its place. Dissolving all the walls which hold the lesser selves apart, Opening the boundless heart, compassion melts the ring pass knot of lower self, submerging ego in the waves of love and bliss. We call now to the most sublime of all the heavenly men, invoking thus the merging power of seamless buddhic love.
Meditation. In meditation deep, let us ponder on the love transcendent pouring forth from Neptune, agent of the solar heart, from whence stream forth those glorious angels who serve the human monads well as sacrificial hearts of love. Let us see the other once again in the light of fusion and no more within the darkness of egoistic domination. Once the fusing power of love has melted lower ego's walls, the lighted link twixt self and self is clearly seen. All separation known within the worlds of form is comprehended as illusion, which it surely is. And consciousness illumined by the love of higher self, learns the higher truth of we, resounding in the unity, the we prevailing ever in the kingdom of the soul, the we seen in the splendor of the radiant higher self. I am you and you are I We are a unity together Gathered in the splendor of the higher self I am you and you are I We share as a unity together Related in the splendor Serve as a unit. 
meditation. In meditation deep, let us ponder brotherhood, the truth of which is only seen when higher self pervades the world of personality, when in the stream of higher light the I and you, the you and I, become the sacred we. We enter into unity divine and know the beauty of the soul. Let us feel that unity and understand its deepest truth. Let us once again form the symbol of the heart, yet open to the greater heart's ascending. But unity and love precious though they be, cannot forever be sustained. Something higher stirs within the heart and threatens all the harmony achieved. Why should this be? Why should the citadel of higher self not last forever? What more or higher could there be?
Meditation In meditation deep, let us ponder what may lie beyond the unity of love. Love and beauty there must surely be, for they are high and good. Are they not enough? Do we in fact now clearly know what must to them be added or removed? Do we really know? Let us ponder. Let us form the symbol of the god of lightning, Uranus, home of electric fire. The raging lion turned towards love expanding thus the scope of self. But love is not enough. Neptune gave his buddhic gift, but Uranus awaits his turn. The loving lion must become the lion of electric fire. God's law demands 
that every temple be destroyed, regardless of its beauty rare. Then let the fire descend from heaven, wielded by the king of circling orbs, electric fire, spirit fire, the flashing fire of Uranus, the Lord of Liberation. Shatter, 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 shatter The walls that bound our spirit's light Shatter, 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 shatter The chains that bind our spirit's light Shatter, 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 shatter Destroy at once the golden cloud Shatter, 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 shatter The dogs are alive and dreadful Meditation Do we understand destruction, the blow that shatters what we build? Do we understand detachment, the merciful withdrawal from all forms which we have loved? In meditation deep, let us ponder on the act of death, which breaks the heart to free it. Again, we form a circle, symbol of the wholeness which at last we can perceive. And what remains when death has had its will. When the temple walls come crashing down, when the lion of magnificence roars in agony and pain, what remains? 
If unity and love are shattered, what can possibly remain? Does isolation bear a gift far beyond the isolation proud of early years? By losing all, can there be gain? Can one lose all, and thus, by losing, win the whole of wholes? What vista is revealed amidst the smoldering ruins of higher self? Isolated unity, isolated unity, isolated unity. I am that, and that I am. I am that, and that I am. Within the moving form of God, I isolate. And unity, found 
hopelessness and unity. Meditation In meditation deep, let us ponder on the whole of wholes. Do we sense it? Do we know it? Can we see the only thing that is, and see it in all things? Can we see as sees the spirit, not the soul? Let us ponder on the whole of wholes, the monolithic unity of God. Let us form the mystic symbol of the flaming diamond rod of power.
The flaming diamond rod bestows the fiery gift of life. Empowered are we now by will and love. Lion-hearted now, we stand having faced our majesty, our peerless King of Kings. As star, as eye, as countenance sublime in light supernal. The heart within us trembles to the roaring of all cosmic lion hearts. Ecstatic in the bliss of self we stand. Confirmed are we, and kingly, in the line of ever greater kings of spirit, each more noble than the king before. We, the new-made lion self, join with fullest voice all those who roar divinity of spirit. Roaring goodness, roaring beauty, roaring out the radiant truth, roaring oneness, roaring life. With them we roar the all-embracing cosmic affirmation. I am that, and that am I. All royal lions roar.
meditation. The lion of cosmic will is he who inspires our king of kings. The solar god, the logos blue, is he towards whom the ancient youth aspires. Deeply centered in our lion nature, we contemplate the grandeur of the great ascent of lion hearts, leading to the heart and will of him in whom all planetary logoi, wisdom dragons every one, live and move and have their very being. Let us focus on the heart of hearts. Can we know ourselves as the lion self? Can we become the point relinquished, found at every point in space? Can we at last know ourselves to be the self of all? Let us ponder deeply. Let us gather in a circle, symbol of our solar logos blue, the one who is the greater life, in whom we live and move and have our very being. The way of Christ leads to the sun, and thence unto the Syrian sphere. The way of Christ is ultimately stellar. The eldest of our brothers will, in distant days ahead, pursue the very path our Logos now pursues. One day in future eons will the Christ a solar Logos be, ensouling then a blazing star alike unto our sun. From Christ unto Shambhala's Lord, from Sanat to the Logos Blue, upon the path to Sirius, we pass into the heart of soul, the central heart systemic of an all-consuming fiery love. Anticipating now the future treading of that path, we open wide our hearts before the radiant heart of the sun. Thank you. 
meditation. Let us meditate upon the glorious, all-inclusive solar life in whom our spirit dwells. Let us form the symbol of the glorious solar orb, the Logos Blue, in whom all lives systemic live and move and have their being. Who am I? Yes, who am I? Am I not the lion found in every self, from the atom to the whole of wholes? The word of God is the lion's roar. The play of God is the lion's play. The heart of God is the lion's heart, whose pulse is the dance of life. Who am I? Who is the lion? Who is the self of selves? From before the first until after the last, we are the self of all. That we were, are now, and ever and alone must be. Yet why these countless worlds? Why this ceaseless play of the lion's self at the heart of all? Why do I the whole create throughout the endless span? I know to do so is my bliss, and more shall I, minute, the whole discover. As the ages roll throughout the nightless night and dayless day of infinite duration. But in time and space, what may I do while passing through ascending spheres until the point of 
points be reached. What may I do? Why, I may shine, shine as every lighted god has shone from the birthing of its light. Shine as shines our great exemplar, Grand man of the heavens, The Logos Blue, The heart of love, Within whose light we live and move And have our very being. Let us shine as shines our Logos, and thus magnify the Lion Self of Selves. So there are resplendent heart shine, shine, shine. Thy streams of love to us in heart shine, shine, shine. Logos, full of wisdom's throne, guardian of the circling spheres. Our system's life through thee alone is well sustained throughout the years. Who is God if Meditation In meditation deep, let us ponder on the radiance of our lives. Are we truly shining sons of God? What must we do so to be? And thus within our place and scope, Shine as shines the sun of suns. In meditation deep, let all resolve, here and now, in union with the Lion of the heavens, to knowingly become that which in fact we truly are. The self of selves, the only self that is. (laughs) 
then as wisdom adds to wisdom, we may well and truly say, I am that and that I am. Together, I am that and that I am. Let us return to the circle of invocation. Let invocation now arise from the solar circle we have formed. If anyone has aught to say for the welfare of the group and of the world, this is the time to speak. Let us sound the invocation of the new and dawning age. The Great Invocation <laughs> 